In this tutorial series, we're going to take a look at working with brushes in Adobe Illustrator. Specifically, we're going to be working on a portrait similar to this one, although I'm going to show you a few other examples of things that I've done uh, like this. I really like working this way. I'm old enough to have been trained as a traditional artist in art school and eventually started working digitally only after I had become a professional illustrator. So I had to teach myself a lot of these techniques over time, techniques that I knew already as a traditional illustrator and that I'm able now to bring into the digital realm. And I've done a number of things like this. Um, I've worked for a company for many years where I produce stock illustrations like this and like this. Now this is a lovely way of working that gives me a really very painterly style, something that can be done very quickly. Uh, I'm going to just quickly show you a few more examples of things that I've done like this. But all of this, if I come down to the view drop down menu, for example, on this one and view as outline, you can see that this is made of vector paths. And if I open up a few of these, for example, I'll make a couple of these available for you. But if it's kind of fun to open up some of these. Now, here is the exercise that we're actually going to be doing. This is the final version, but let me show you how it begins. This starts with a photograph. Let me bring up the photograph that I'm going to be working with here. So this is not going to require that you be an excellent portrait drawer. We're going to use this as our basis, and then we're going to build up from there. This is going to be primarily what we're going to be doing today is getting it to this point. We will take it a little bit further in terms of coloring. Of course, taking it to this level um, might be beyond the scope of this series, although I'm going to give you all the tools you need to get it to this point. If you can take your portrait, get it to this level, that would be great. It doesn't have to be. All I'm looking for from you is something like this. But again, this is utilizing if I come to the View drop-down menu and select Outline, this is in fact just utilizing the vector paths already from, that we're already familiar with in Illustrator. But before we jump into this exercise, there's a few things that I want us to know about working with brushes and the stroke panel in Illustrator. So what I'd like you to do is come to the File drop-down menu and select New. And again, we're going to work with the 8.5 by 11 document. I'm going to make my orientation horizontal, and I'm going to say Create. Okay. First thing we're going to do is create a path on our artboard here that we can work with. I'm going to do that with my pencil tool by coming over to my toolbox, choosing my pencil tool, and I'm just going to draw with my cursor a S shape. What we have here, of course, is a stroke. Primarily, we've been working with fills. If I open up my color panel, of course, and take a look at this, you can see this does, in fact, have a fill color of white. We're not seeing it right now, but if I was to change that to some other color, you could see how that is filling that shape. For this exercise, we don't want to have any fill color. We are going to be working exclusively with the stroke property. So what I would like you to do with this new shape is set your fill color to none. Let's bring our stroke indicator forward because that is what we're going to be working with. And with that forward, let's open up our stroke panel over here. Now, if you see your stroke panel looking like this with a minimized view, I want you to come over here to your options button, click on that and say show options, choose show options. Let's do a very quick tour of the stroke panel. We've already seen the weight property. If I click the up arrow here, you can see I can add weight or thickness to that stroke. I can also click on the disclosure triangle here to reveal the presets and choose a value here like 20. I'm going to actually leave it at 20. That seems like a good size for this exercise. Underneath that, you can see that we have the ability to change the end cap. I can choose the around cap here. Underneath that, we have the ability to add different shapes to our corners. I don't actually have a corner in this shape here, so this doesn't really apply. I also don't have the ability to change the align stroke, but I do want to show you what this does. So I'm going to create a new shape. I'm going to select the rectangle tool and just draw a shape like this. Now this is a closed shape as opposed to this, which is an open shape. Closed shaped objects allow me to play with this align stroke feature. Let me just show you what's happening here. By default, the stroke is aligned to the center of that stroke. But I can set the, the stroke to be on the inside of that object so it aligns differently. Or if I click on this one, I can align it to the outside. I'm just going to select this and get rid of this. I'm going to come back to my original shape here and let's take a look 
at some more options in the stroke panel. Underneath the align stroke, I have dashed line. I do have control over some of the properties here, for example, the size of the dash by putting my cursor inside of this field here. If I press my down arrow, I can reduce the size of that dash. Right beside that, if I click inside that gap option, I can choose the size of the gap. I mostly use dashed lines for diagrams or maps or things like that. But for this exercise, we don't want a dashed line, so I'm going to uncheck that. Underneath that option, you see we have something here that allows us to add arrowheads to uh, either end of our stroke. And we have the ability to change the size of the arrowhead underneath there. But again, I don't want to add arrowheads to for this exercise, so I'm going to come back here and set both of these to none. Scrolling up and selecting none. All of this exploration of the strokes panel has led us up to this point here, which is what I really wanted to show you. This field down here called profile allows us to shape our stroke in unique and interesting ways. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Right now it's set to uniform, but if I click on that disclosure triangle, you can see I have other profile options here. This first one, tapered at either end, gives me a tapered stroke. Now I love this sort of perfect calligraphy for elegant looking brush strokes, but cartoon brush strokes also have this sort of shape. Let's take a look at some more options. This one underneath it is tapered at both ends, but also has a taper roughly in the middle, not quite in the middle. If I was to guess, I would say that that is probably at the golden ratio point of that stroke. Let's take a look at a couple of other ones. This one is tapered on either end, but is otherwise uniform. This is a nice stroke, the wedge stroke, which starts off thick on one end and tapers elegantly to the other end. This one here, Again, tapers on either end, but widens, not in the middle again, I would suggest probably around the golden ratio point there. But by far, my favorite of all these preset stroke profiles is this one here at the bottom, width profile number six. And the reason why, if I select that, is you'll see that the weight of the stroke is positioned on one side of this vector path, rather than being split right down the middle as we saw earlier. This allows for a lot of precise control, as we'll see as we do this exercise. Now, one thing I do want to highlight here is that there are some controls right next to these profiles here that allow me to flip this profile to one side or the other of this vector path. For example, if I click here, flip across, you can see that the weight of that stroke is now on the other side of that vector path. Flick it back both ways. This option, flip along, won't give me any difference here because it's symmetrical from one end to the other. But let me show you how this might work here. If I were to click on that wedge profile and then select flip along this way, you can see that it will flip that profile to either end of that stroke. Now that's all I really wanted to show you about the stroke panel. But combining these features with our brushes from the brushes panel, I'm going to open up my brushes panel here, allows us to do that painterly effect that we are going to be doing with this exercise. Before we do that though, let's take a quick tour of the brushes panel. The brushes panel, when I open it up, has some pre-installed brushes. Across the top, we have what are called our calligraphic brushes. Now, these calligraphic brushes have their limitations. I don't use them very much. The reason being is that the stroke profiles that we were just looking at can't be applied to these brushes across the top here. So let me just state right off the bat, do not use these calligraphic brushes if you can remember to avoid it. Underneath these brushes, however, there's a different type of brush here. This basic one looks like the regular stroke, but underneath that, you see this one here. This is an art brush. If I select that and then make the stroke a little heavier so that we can see this a bit better, you can see that it is trying to emulate a traditional charcoal stroke. This is primarily the, the type of brush that we are going to be working with in this exercise. But let me show you a couple of other brushes before we do that. Underneath that charcoal brush is another art brush. If I click on that, you'll see that this is a, a graphic motif that has been now applied to that vector stroke. Underneath that is another type of brush. This is the real brush brush, um, and it's trying to emulate a real brush stroke. Again, this has its limitations. It doesn't allow us to reshape it using the stroke profiles that we were looking at earlier. So again, I don't use it that often. The last preset brush I want to take a look at here is something called a pattern brush. If I click on that, you can see that this pattern brush is really interesting. And as you can see, it actually allows us to work with photographic elements. We aren't going to use this brush in our exercise either, although there's some really interesting things that we could do with it. Primarily, we are going to be staying with these art brushes.
In our next video, we are going to start this exercise. What I want you to do is go online and find a portrait. It could be a self-portrait, or a portrait of someone you know, or a celebrity. Let me show you the portrait that I'm going to be working with here. I'll make this available to you if you would like to work with this and follow along directly. But I encourage you to find your own portrait. When you have found that, I want you to start up the next video.